Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build an app like Uber using Ruby on Rails and Hotwire. So tune in, it's going to be a really cool video and let's get into it. We're going to open the terminal and then we can type Rails new and then the name of the app, which I'm going to call it, you know what I was thinking is to call it Ruber. <laughs> I know it's kind of cringy, but because um, Ruby and Uber. <laughs> it's kind of silly. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to specify the database as PostgreSQL and dash C to specify Tailwind for CSS. Because that's the library I want to use for this video. Now we're going to create the app. CD into Ruber and let's just start it up and check it out. See what happens. So I'm going to use bin dev to start the server. It's ready and now we can open up the browser, go to localhost 3000. We'll see the kid and find a database. We can click here to create database. And now everything is set up perfectly. We see the rail screen. We, we know everything's working. So this is perfect. From here, I want to just add a little landing page and we can do that by going into the console either turning off the server or just opening a new tab and then let's create a new controller so I'm gonna say rails G controller I'm gonna call it pages and then we're gonna have a home action for the home page and from here let's open up Visual Studio Code let's go and see app and then I'm gonna go to the config folder and the routes.rb. Now in here, you'll see that with that generator, it added a route for pages slash home, but we actually just wanna go and change it to root. So I'm moving it down here and then I'll actually just delete this one. And then uh, to, to change it, we need to change the slash to a pound sign. So it's going to the pages controller and the home action. Now, if we refresh, we'll see that we there's the pages, the home page displayed. And if we want to edit that page, we can go into our app, go into the app folder, the views, pages, and home. And in here, I'm going to edit this text, say the name of our app, Ruber, and I'm going to add a description. So it's a ride sharing app built on. Ruby on Rails and Hotwire. Okay, that's perfect. Now, if we wanna add some styling to the main page and we wanna make this look a little bit better, we can do that by removing the padding on the outside. So let's go into the layouts folder, the application.html. And now there's this main tag. This is added because we use the Tailwind uh, when we when we specify the option, it also adds this container, I guess, just to kind of clean it up, add some padding. But I don't want to have that because I want to have my pages take up the full width. So I remove that main. And then now if I want to change, I could either change the color on the home page, which that's what I'll probably do. So I'll just do it in this main div. And then I'll say take up the whole page and we don't see anything yet but if I change the background now see we're able to affect the whole page and everything's looking nice now I can add some styling to align these items and add a little bit of padding to the top now we see everything's kind of getting into the right place Little bit more styling to clean things up so we got ruber a ride sharing app built on ruby on rails and hotwire or I, I guess i should say built with ruby on rails anyways now i think what we'll do is we'll have an option to sign up as a user or to sign up as a driver we can have those two options underneath here so i'll first just build the links and and then we'll add in uh, the device gem for users and drivers. So this 
start. You just say sign up as user, and then I'm gonna just add a blank URL. So I'm gonna use the hashtag sign in quotes. So that right now it's just gonna be a link that doesn't go anywhere. At least I can get the styling down. go back we'll see there's a little bit of styling now so we're gonna have two links one for user and one for a driver Go back we'll see these two links now i want to add some margin between the links and this comment or the description of the app a little bit, bit more okay so we have two links sign up as user sign up as driver when you click this it would go to the user sign up click here it goes to the driver sign up so to add in these two models one for user one for driver we'll first add the device gem which will make everything really easy for authentication. It'll create the all of the logic and the views. Okay, we got a question from chat. Uh, are both driver and users be devised entities themselves or are they going to be the same but with Boolean diffs? So that's a great question. And we could do it we could do it both ways. We could have a single model of users and then we could do like a type of user on the database. That would allow us to keep both models within the same database or the same database table. And then just use um, one column to differentiate them. But I actually prefer to do two separate models and two separate database tables just because it feels more secure to have them separated out of one database table and also with device we'll be able to have two different routes that we can use so we have one route to sign in as a user and one route to sign in as driver I feel like it makes things easier if you do two models so that's probably what I'm gonna do in this video because uh, I'm just trying to keep it simple really but let's add this device gem Doing bundle add device. And now we can do Rails G device colon install to set up device. And from here, uh, there's a few things that it wants us to do. But the most important, we've already set the root of the application. So other than that, we can just add these alerts to display. So we can go into the app, into layouts, the application html and let's put in a partial here alerts.html.erb and now we're going to be able to render these alerts in the layout all right now that we set up device we're going to create the two models and i'm going to call them customer and driver so to do that we can do the rails g device command and then add the name of the model so i'm going to call it customer i'm also going to generate a model for the driver now we can migrate the database all right now automatically we have oh we have to restart the server so we haven't restarted the server after we added device so that's why we got this. And now that we restart, we'll see everything's working. And now when we click on these links, I want them to go to the correct page. Right now they're not pointed at anything. So let's go back into that home page. And right here, sign up as a user. I guess I'll just say sign up as customer. And then let's change the route here or the URL that the link is pointing to. So it'll be new customer registration path. If 
we reload, we'll see now when we click, we actually go to this sign in screen where we're able to sign up or log in. And I want the same thing to happen for a driver. So we can change this route to new driver registration path. And now the same thing happens for driver. Uh, we can't really tell these pages apart right now, which is kind of annoying. There could be something displayed better to kind of set these apart. All right, so now that we have these two pages, I just want to add something to distinguish the signups pages for customers and drivers. So I'm going to generate, I'm going to do the command to install the device views so we can overwrite them. So I just did that command. And now if we come in here, we'll see we have a device folder in the views. And if I come in here to the registrations, page. I just want to come in here and I want to actually I'll use the resource name uh, variable that we have access to and I'll place it up here in the sign up and now it should say either um, customer sign up or driver sign up. So we got it to show up the customer sign up. Uh, it's actually I want to upcase it or actually I want to capitalize it capitalize and then also just in case that is ever nil I will do a safety operator now we see we have the customer sign up and then I will do a little bit of styling to center that form I feel like that's pretty important so I'll just add a div around this with some flex a little bit of padding which should make things look nice It's a little bit more centered, doesn't look perfect. Also, I don't want to get carried away with uh, this part. We have the sign up. Um, that works. All right, let's just sign up. Um, so if we're signing up as the customer. Now we would be signed in and now we're going to get back to the home page and we're probably going to want to display something else. We're going to want to display like the a blank page. You know what we can do is we can just display a button to start a new ride. So I'm going to come back to the home page and what we can do is right underneath this, the header and the description. I'm going to do a conditioner. Uh, oh, didn't mean to say that. I got to get better at uh, streaming. Don't make fun of me too much. All right, I'm going to do a condition if current customer. Else, we're going to show this. All right, so now that we have that condition, we're not showing the sign in links anymore but right here instead I want to do a new link for new ride okay so now that we have this page here and we have the link to request new ride um, actually that's not really we could do that. Actually, yeah, let's do that for now. Let's let's keep it simple, and then later on we can try to make it more magical. But basically, a ride is we're gonna want to go to a page to create that ride. So from here, let's create that model by like going back into the console, and I actually want to scaffold it to make this a bit easier because it'll already create the views for us. So we can do Rails G scaffold ride. And now our ride is going to have like a pickup location and then a drop off location. And these can both be strings because uh, it'll most likely just be an address. And then it's also going to belong to a customer. The customer is going to have many rides. And it's also going to belong to a driver because a driver is going to get assigned to the ride. 
Although I think we might have to do a, a joining table uh, because how we're going to do this, I don't know. So let's start off, let's not define, or let's not add the association for the driver, but let's just add the one for the customer and then we'll figure that out later. So when we do this scaffold and we migrate the database, what this does is actually, it adds everything we need for rides. So now if we go to rides slash new, we have this whole form here where you can uh, set the pickup location, the drop off location, and then it also include the customer. That's because it doesn't, it, it, uh, it just automatically does this. So I want to delete that because, well, we'd already have the customer logged in. But what I want to do is I want to have this link go to that new ride page. So let's come up here and we'll change this URL to new ride path. Now we click request new ride. It brings us to this page to create the new ride where we can set the pickup location. So let's say I'm going to get picked up from 10 Main Street in uh, Orlando. And then I'm going to like 15 Disney Street. I know these aren't very creative names of streets, but this is what I think. And then the customer field, let's actually remove this because we already have the customer signed in. And when we create the ride right now, I don't think it's going to save because see, it says customer must exist. So actually, if we put in an ID in here, it would work. But I just want to fix this. I want to remove the field and I want to do it in the back end. So to do that, we can come into the code and open up the controllers. Or actually, let's remove that field first. So let's go to views. Let's go to rides and let's go into the form. And you'll see there's a field for customer ID. And let's just remove that completely. Now, if we refresh, we'll see. We just have pick up and drop off. Perfect. And now with that, I'm going to go and edit the rides controller. So you can open the controllers folder, the rides controller. And we're going to go in here to the ride params. Because these are where we're permitting which attributes are allowed to be passed in. And we don't want to allow someone to pass in the customer ID because then they could put a ride on any customer. And we don't want users to have that control and to be able to hack the system. So actually, when we create it, what we'll do instead is we'll say current customer dot rides dot new. And actually, the customer model doesn't have the association. I'll show you. So if we go to the ride model, we'll see that it belongs to customer. But if we go to customer model, there's nothing about rides yet. Uh, so we actually have to add that to say has many rides. And then we can add any other options like dependent destroy means when the customer is destroyed, it'll destroy all the rides too. I actually don't think we want to do that. We might just want to do dependent nullify where we nullify the customer ID or think about this in the long term. To start off, I'll just keep it as, I'll keep it simple with has many rides. Which is going to allow us to do this customer, current customer dot rides dot new. And now this should work perfectly. So if we want to do our same ride and now we create it, we'll see that the ride was successfully created. And we actually are showing the customer. That's fine because it's the partial. But now that we'd have this ride, um, in our app, I think it would go into like a pending status where it's waiting for a driver to accept it. But this is already very cool. So let's add that status right now. So what we can do is we can do a new migration and we can say add status to rides. And status is gonna be a type integer. And let's migrate the database. And I'll show you why that integer is important. So if we go back into the code and then we go into the models. So over here on the side, you can open up apps, models, and go to the ride.rb. Inside of this model, we're gonna add that enum. So enum is like a way to, to map 
a number or some sort of database column to a status and then we have some cool methods available so i'll show you how that works we can say enum status and then you can simply just say you could pass an array of the keys that would map or we could do a hash where we explicitly set which integer we want but i'm just going to keep it simple with an array so status one would be pending uh, status two could be in progress and status three could be canceled and what this means is when that integer is uh, zero so actually we should set a default if we go back um, we actually did migrate this so what i want to do is i want to uh, set a default for the status field and i want to default to zero so if we want to go if we want to undo the migration which is what we need to do if we want to edit that migration file we can go we could type rails db rollback this will undo the migration and now we can go into the db folder open up that latest migration and here at the end i want to set a default i want to set it to zero and then we can migrate again with rails db migrate perfect so now what happens when we create that new ride it'll start in the pending status and we can go and check that out right now so actually on the partial on the in the rides folder in the views so right now we're displaying the customer id but i want to also display the status so i'm just going to copy this add it right next to this and i can say the status just for now so we can see it so obviously we want to change the ui to make it look better we can create a new and then we'll see that it gets that default status of pending. Okay, so now that we have this, I actually want to start working on the driver panel because we have a request new ride. Or actually, real quick, let's make it so if the user has already requested a ride and it's pending, then we'll actually display some UI for that here. So to do this, we can go back to the home page. So I'm just going to close all these folders. But if we go to app, views pages home now in here we have this condition if current customer and we probably want to find some way we want to say like if current customer or current driver let's just do that for now and then inside of here we can say if current customer then we display request new ride else if it's not our current customer then it have to be a driver and we could say like view available rides. And these would be all the rides that are pending. And this would go to some path. All right, but for a customer, we need to say if current customer dot active ride. there's an active ride then we might want to display some text say like your active or your ride to and we could just say that drop off location else we'd have the link to request a new ride See, we have this method, uh, undefined method active ride because we haven't defined that yet. I wanted to find that on the customer model. So we can come in here to the customer model and add a new method active ride. And we'll just say rides where status is pending dot last. And we'll see we have this. Now we have the message, your ride to 15 Disney Street Orlando is scheduled. And then we might want to have a button to cancel it. But I, I think this is good enough for the customer side for right now. Now I want to move on to the driver side. So I'm actually going to open a new incognito window so I can log in as a driver now. If we come over here, let's sign up as a driver. And 
All right, now we're signing as driver and we'll see we have the link. Instead of the other link, we have view available rides. And when I click this, I wanna to go to a page where I can see all of the pending rides and then I can choose one that I wanna actually go on or the one that I wanna drive for. So let's create a new route for that and a new page. Actually, we could do a scaffold, but doing a scaffold creates a lot of extra code. Like for example, in the rides, it created all these different files that we're not gonna use like JBuilders. That's for JSON, we don't even need this in our app. So I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm not gonna do a scaffold because all we need is a route for available rides. So to do that, uh, you know what, I'll do a, instead of a scaffold, I'll just do a controller. So I'll say Rails G controller. And we'll do available rides. And that's just gonna have an index. And that's all we really need to do. We can start the server. And now we're gonna have a new route. If you see available rides. And it, it did a get action. I actually wanna replace this with using a resources like this for rides. We could say resources, available rides. And then I'm gonna specify, we only want the index action because that's the one that we're gonna be using. Now, if you go back to that home page where we had the empty route for view available rides, we can now set this available rides path. Now when we click it, it'll go to that available rides index. And we'll see there's nothing yet, there's just the text. So we can go change that. Available rides. I'm gonna change this header and say, view, viewing all pending rides. <clears throat> and then right here, we loop through all the rides and we do some sort of UI for them. So to do that, we can do some Ruby, we'll say available rides, but we don't have this available rides object yet, so we can define this in the controller. If we go over, open the controller, go to the one for available rides, and then inside of this action, we'll create this instance variable. Available rides will equal to ride.pending, because actually adding the enum like we did earlier, adding the enum status, it also defines these methods on the class and it defines methods on the instance. So we could say things like ride.pending. We can also say ride.pending. Uh, <laughs> well, that sounds exactly the same, but see how this one's the instance and then this is off the class. And when you do it off the class, it'll return a scope of those objects. So just like this should work already. And then inside the view, we can loop through the available rides. And then we could display, <clears throat> actually let's render a partial available ride. We can pass it ride. And then inside of here, we can actually create that partial. And here's where we put all the code about that ride. I'm gonna give it a div, a little bit of padding. And I'm gonna do uh, some text to describe the ride. So this would be like a uh, ride from, from would be this, the pickup location. Say ride.pickup location. To ride.dropoff. page and we see there's actually two rides available now we can see them I want to do a little bit more styling difference so let's add like a background PG gray 700 or 700 is probably too dark let's do 300 so it just sticks out a little bit from the white and then also I want to add some spacing so to do that I'm gonna go out of the partial actually I'm gonna add a div around these elements and make sure you do it outside of the loop also so that uh, it's wrapping all of the elements. 
because when you do the loop, it's just iterating over each ride and then rendering HTML inside of wherever it is. So that's why I'm putting the div around it. I'm going to add a class of grid and I'm going to add gap four. And you'll see that that spaces it out with a little bit of margin. And I also want to space it out from the top, say margin top eight. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and center this all by adding some styling to the main div, just like we do for the rest of the app. But yeah, there we go. Now we can view all pending rides. And then we see we have a ride here, ride there. I'm actually going to display the customer's email. Well, not email, we'd want to display their name. But right now we don't have a name field for the customer. So we could just say for customer and then we'll, we'll just, for right now we'll just do the email. Oh, whoops, see undefined method email for ride. I meant to say ride.customer email. And you see how I had to do the dot? We can actually replace this by a cool method called delegate. Oh, I can do that real quick. So we can go into the model delegate email to customer. Oh. And then also prefix true, which means uh, we can use it with a prefix like customer underscore email. It kind of makes more sense. If we reload, Okay, perfect. Everything's looking good. We see it's for this customer, arrive from this to this. And then we're probably gonna have two buttons. Or actually, we don't need two buttons right now because uh, the way this UI is, you're picking from a list. I think there could just be one button that says like, uh, select this ride. And we really don't have to get too fancy at this part of the tutorial. So I'm gonna go right under here and I'm gonna add a new link. We'll say, Select, or no, accept this ride. See, we have a little button to accept the ride now. Now, when I click this, I wanna, I wanna make it so that now uh, the, the driver also has an, has a active ride and they wouldn't see this button to view available rides and they wouldn't see any of the other rides. So what we can do is we can create a route uh, for when you click this. And we might do it, we could probably do it off the available rides. So here we're saying that we only want to have an index action. Let's also allow a create action, which will let us post to this create. And then right here in accept this ride, we can go and add a route and say available rides path. So it's actually exactly the same, except for we're gonna post to it. Right here we'd say, we have to add a data turbo method post. And this will take our regular link and make it submit a post request to the server. But we also wanna include the ID for the ride so we can tell which ride it was. So right here, I'm gonna add in ride ID as a parameter to the URL. And then we can just pass it the ride.id. Now this should already be posting to the server. If you see, I clicked and I'm gonna go in the console and oh, it actually, we got an error. The action create could not be found. That's because we didn't define a method on this controller. So if you go into that billable rides controller, you'll see we only have an index action. So I'm gonna create the create action and inside of here we do the code to accept the ride. Now I just want to prove that it's working so if we accept the ride we'll see there's a post request uh, weird it's still not finding it I think it should or no it is look it is processing as turbo stream and then it completed with a 200 so everything was fine so inside here, let's handle that logic. So what's gonna happen is we can use the same scope ride.pending and we can actually find by the ride ID that we're passing in. So this would be our ride. All right, so now we need to add the association for the ride to connect it to the driver. 
And there's a few ways that we can do this, but to keep it simple, I'm just gonna add an attribute on the ride model with a driver ID and I'm gonna make it optional. So originally it'd be empty. And then once the driver is selected, we would populate the that ID. And we'd also update the ride to be in progress. So to add that to add the driver ID, we can go create uh, open a new tab and do a migration. RLG migration add driver ID to rides. And <clears throat> well, there's a few ways we could do this. We could uh, use the foreign key, or we could just do um, belongs to. I'm gonna do belong to, so we use the foreign key. All right, so we migrate it, but now we want to edit this file. So we can go back into the code and you can either open this up or you can just search for it. But I'm gonna come in here and we can look in where we see null false. I actually wanna say null true, which will mean that the driver can be true, can be null initially, and then we'll set it once we find the driver. After we've done that, we can migrate the database. We've added the driver ID and then we can set that up, we can finish adding the association. So in the driver model, we'll say has many rides. And then in the ride model, we'll go, we don't see any belongs to driver, so we need to add that. Belongs to driver, except for we're gonna say optional true, because uh, when we start, we don't have a driver and then we'll set it after. So that's perfect. And then now we can go back to that create action. In here, once we find that ride, Let's just update it with the driver ID, current driver.id, and then also the status should be in progress. But all we're gonna do is update it and then we can just redirect to the root path. We could actually give an alert and say, <clears throat> I guess it should be a notice. You have accepted the ride successfully. All right, now let's see how that looks. So if we come back in here now, I expect when I click this, it should do that. Okay, perfect. So look, you've accepted the ride successfully. If we reload, we'll see, okay, we have, we still don't see anything. So I'm going to go and change that logic. So in here, if you see for the customer side, we were asking if their customer has an active ride, then we display this. So I kind of want to do the same thing for the driver. So in here we could say if current driver dot active ride, then we'd basically just say the same thing. Gear ride to or I'll say you're driving Active ride customer email. Now this is very messy. I would never want my code to look like this, but I'm just trying to set it up real quickly. All right, yeah, because look, we're already getting issues. Oops, I forgot to end the conditional. <clears throat> Whoops. So actually, the current driver doesn't have the active ride method because we haven't added that yet. Let's go in the driver model and let's add that method active ride. This will be rides dot where uh, status active. And then we can just grab the last one. Or actually, it's not active; it's in progress. And then here we go, we have, so now we can see the two screens side by side. One is waiting for a pickup, your ride is scheduled, and the other one is telling the driver, I'm driving this person to this drop off location. And this is already like MVP for an Uber app. So I'm pretty happy about this. But there is one thing that I just remembered, or I just realized, we have a status for pending, we have a status for in progress, we have a status for canceled, but we don't have a status for completed. So we need to add that in. So 
I'm going to go back to the models. And I'm going to go to the ride model and I'll actually, I'll make the completed one the third and then canceled will be the last. I just feel like this looks right to me. And we don't have to worry about messing with the data because uh, this is already, we haven't created any records that have that canceled status. Now, everything's looking good. So there you have it. That's how to build a ride sharing app like Uber with Ruby on Rails and Hotwire. We can make this more in depth and we could build out more interactivity and have more cool things happening. But I just wanted to get the base layout of this app so we can have our Uber app and everything working. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. If you did like this video, then please subscribe to my channel, like and comment down below if there's anything else that you'd like me to build, any ideas for stuff or even for this Uber app, if you want me to build out new features, add in some hotwire functionality, things like that. Uh, I'll do it in the next video.